مولاي صلي وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل اعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس اله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم والعقبة للمتقين ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين وشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين uh, These are known as معوذتين The two protections معوذ عوذ من protection So in this Now the second is Surah An-Nas And as you could see that there are uh, protection is asked from four evil and one of the jealousy of that person. The other one is Allah Subhanahu wa they are asking Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala I seek protection from the lord of the mankind. Now you see next is the mankind because mankind does wrong to mankind. The king of the mankind, the real god of mankind and from the evil of the retreating whisperer means shaitan and his workers who is, is whispers in the heart of a mankind whenever he be from among the jinns or from the mankind. So whoever it is being from the minal jinnati wa nas, from the jinn or the, uh, uh, the devil and his army, according to one of the hadiths, uh, every day after the sunset, shaitan set his throne in the Mediterranean ocean. It is from the hadiths. And he invites all the devils, all the shaitan who are spread out. It's a whole nation, it's a whole generation, men and women among them. There's a male, female, they have families. So he invites them and he asks them that what did you do today against the mankind? Because he took an oath with Allah that I will destroy the mankind by misguiding them and making them worship false god, turn them age against each other, cause their bloodshed, cause them to do evil against each other and you and disobey you. So, so, so when the people come, they, when this shayateen gathered, well, he asked, first one, what did you do? So he said, I made a person to do a stealing, somebody to lie, somebody to uh, rob, somebody to commit murder. He said, okay, okay, okay. Then last one stands up. And then he says, I will tell you the thing which I did, which will make you proud of me. And he says, yes, tell me what did you do? And this last one says, today I make a husband wife separated by divorce, by making them fight each other. So he whispered in the ears or the mind or the heart of people. And the wife thinks the husband is not good to me. And husband thinks wife is not good to me. This whispering happened in the ear and person cannot control this. This is why we ask, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, La hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim. So all these things we do to seek the protection of Allah from the thing. So uh, shaitan is tender when he listens to this. And he hugs him and he says, you are the best and you did the greatest of the job to destroy a family. If you destroy a family, you destroy the whole unit of mankind because humanity is propagated by marriage and family. So, so, so with this, with this uh, uh, I will stop and if any question, any comment, any suggestion, please ask me. If so. There are a lot of things about Surah Falak and Nas. One should recite every night. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you, if you recite it every night before you go to bed, you will be protected from any evil or any wrongdoing or any harm coming to you. So with this, I will stop. If you have any question, please ask. Or if you have any comment, please advise. Uh, Shai, he said that if these two ayah were revealed twice, do you know what is the reason okay. behind okay. for having them revealed twice? Okay. Okay. The, first the first time, time when we say the second time revelation is basically when Prophet was sick by a spell casted on him. So Allah Ta'ala told us that if you are being given a, if you come through any physical sickness from a evil eye, from a whispering of shaitan, from any wrong done to you, you should recite this to protect yourself and your family and your children and your spouse. So second time was that logic. First time of logic is when Arabs were getting aggressive and as you could see that they were trying to find some way to stop Prophet. They were counseling and consulting that we should do something to stop. So Prophet ﷺ is given these things to ask that that I seek the protection of the God who brought 
you know, who bring the dawn from the darkness and for whatever evil these people do against each other and myself. So this was given to him. Uh, one very important point I forgot to mention. Uh, so, uh, so now I hope I clarify that point. That first time it was revealed against Quraysh, the Meccans, the Arabs who were doing wrong to him. Second time it was shown in his dream that read this surah so that you will be protected from all physical, spiritual, mental, all kind of illnesses for yourself, for your spouses, for your children, for your loved ones, anybody you want to read it. And that's why it is a protection from God. So this is a special protection of God for those people who do read these things. Now, the uh, the important thing I want to tell you is that uh, there is one of the companion, Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu anhu. He was one of the very, uh, you know, very important companion of Prophet. And he thought that these two surahs were given to by Allah to Prophet as a special gift to heal him or protect him. And it was not supposed to be for everybody. But the other companions disagree with it and they thought and they agreed and believed that this is a part of Quran. Because Abdullah ibn Masood was thinking that these are a special dua like many other dua Allah had given to Prophet. But then the other companion agreed on it. So do not be misguided because these Christian apologists and the, the other people they think oh Quran has certain discrepancy. There is no discrepancy in this regard. That it was because why he Abdullah ibn Masood will think so? He said because here it says Qul A'uz. It means that Prophet is asked to seek protection of God. But with that we say Qul Yahiyul Kafirun. So all these things also are saying the Prophet is being commanded to say those things. But these are special protection. So companion agreed about it. And when they put it in the Quran as a part of the Quran, it was agreed about by everybody and no other companion or the spouses of Prophet disagree with this understanding. So just be aware, be aware of the historical context of one of the aspects. Okay. okay. So, do you have any questions? No, I'm okay. 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 So, so, recite so this every night, every night and, 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 and breathe, breathe on the hand, on the hand and then rub from head to toe on yourself or anybody you love or you care for. This is the protection as Prophet's wife did it to his body. With his own hand, thinking that his own hands are blessed, more blessed. So this is a very and after this was revealed, Prophet did stop doing many other azkar and protection and ask these two things for every evil because it come encompass everything. So we should not forget to read this every night. And as you know, uh uh Falaq and uh al Kafirun, sorry, Kulyayu al Kafirun, the one which you read Al Kafirun. If you read it four times, it is equal to reading a Quran and person, if he dies, that person will be resurrected as a believer on a monotheist. Uh, we only have seven minutes left, so I think I will stop here today. And next time we will discuss about Surah Ikhlas, Qulullah and Surah Najm. Now, uh, I want to, uh, before we end, there are a few minutes left, let me talk about what happened. Now, this is becoming a very hard, difficult time. And Surah Najm was supposed to be revealed in the next few days. So it means the Muslims are about five years already in, in Mecca, sixth year about they are uh, asking for the, uh, for the acceptance and Islamic preaching. And this thing becomes so hard on the Muslims that they were forced to flee to Abyssinia. And there were, I will tell you inshallah next, uh, next uh, time before we begin Surah Ikhlas, uh, that there's a group of Muslims who immigrated to Syria, or oh sorry, uh, Abyssinia, which is today's Ethiopia, for protection because they were so much persecuted. And this Abyssinian king, who was a, who was a King Negus of that time, and he was a Christian king. And Prophet says, the Christian, you will find more kinder and soft-hearted compared to Jewish who may stab or who may not be trustworthy. In other words, Prophet says, you can not eat with Christians because they eat pork, but you can eat with the Jews, but you cannot sleep in, in Jewish or trust them because they stab you in the back. But the Christians are not that way. Christian will be kind to you. 
So this is what Prophet taught us, and this is one of the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu that the, you will find Christians more kind-hearted because they love Jesus, they love Allah, and they are more softer. And as you see, all the world charities besides Muslims, Muslims are the biggest charity doer in the world. And about after that, the Christians are the, all over the world who do take care of these people, but many of them are, you know, cheater. But then they still have this concept. But you will not find any Jewish charity in the world. They always take care of their own. And they do as long as they see there's a benefit for themselves. So this is uh, basically uh, not to taunt or, or, or say anything evil about anybody, but this is a common trend you will find. Jewish people are not all the same, you know, every nation has good and bad people. So there are good people among people, there are bad people among people, but as a general, when you take opinion about people. So this is, inshallah, I will talk about what happened while this ikhlas was revealed and Surah Najam was revealed. What happened after that now? Because some people have already fled to Abyssinia to find a peaceful time with the king there. Inshallah, we will stop and uh, discuss next time. Thank you. You're welcome. Any comment, any question? Thank you. You're welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Bye. Bye-bye.